So my area of expertise is neuroscience, but my understanding of the way the vape works is that there is a, a heating element that heats a liquid that contains, usually contains nicotine, sometimes contains flavoring, and turns it into an aerosol that is then inhaled. So nicotine gets into the brain and body. Um, nicotine will increase levels of dopamine in areas of the brain that um, are associated with reinforcing behaviors. So this is why nicotine is an addictive substance. When um, that occurs in the brain, it is sort of tab tagged as a behavior that the person should repeat over and over. And then use of nicotine over time can lead to addiction, which is compulsive use of a substance despite the negative consequences that it may have for you. Right. It is true that vaping exposes the body to fewer toxicants than smoking combustible cigarettes, but there are, it's obviously still uh, exposing the body to the drug of nicotine. And then also the issue of other things that are contained in that vape liquid. I think it's really important to emphasize that the risks of vaping are very different depending on the population. So as you point out, if someone's an adult and they have an addiction to cigarettes, if they were to switch entirely to vaping, that would probably be safer for them. But exposing a young developing brain to nicotine can be quite harmful. As I mentioned, there's a high risk of addiction to nicotine and it's an extremely addictive drug. And whenever the brain is exposed to a drug earlier in life or while it's still developing, the risk of addiction is even higher. There's also evidence to suggest that children who vape may be more likely to take up smoking combustible cigarettes in their futures. And um, smoking combustible cigarettes is the number one preventable cause of death. So that's extremely dangerous. Another risk associated with vaping is the flavorings that are added. It's still pretty unknown what inhaling those flavorings does to the body over time. So a lot of these things have been approved as additives for use in food products, but ingesting something and digesting it is very different from inhaling it into the lungs. So I think some risks of vaping uh, remain unknown. I think we do have good evidence that those flavors are specifically attractive to children. We have a few different um, survey data sources in the US that have looked at that. And by far, young people who initiate vaping do so with flavored products and they prefer the flavored products. The sort of understanding that vapes are less dangerous than other drugs needs to be challenged in that age group for sure. Um, there's also data to suggest that kids don't realize that vapes the majority of the time will contain nicotine. Sometimes they think that they're only inhaling flavoring when in fact they are dosing themselves with a highly addictive chemical. So I think uh, better public education of young people around the potential risks of vaping could be very helpful. Another piece of evidence that I think is germane to this discussion is the fact that nicotine specifically has been demonstrated to prime the rewarding effects of other drugs. So a brain exposed to nicotine might subsequently find something like cocaine more rewarding than if the person hadn't previously been exposed to nicotine. So that's another risk of um, young people taking nicotine. With policymaking, it's always an issue of balancing um, public health benefit and harms. And I think we have um, significant data to suggest that having flavored e-cigarettes available is a health risk for young people.